What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Yee Yee Podcast. Uh, my name is Parker Smith. I'm joined by my two brothers, Granger and Tyler. We are uh, the founders of Yee Yee, which is an outdoor brand based on faith, uh, freedom, and the outdoors. And here we are. We're back again for podcasts. We haven't done this um, in about a month or so, but we're going to try to get into doing it uh, a little bit more regularly. I figured that today's podcast episode would actually be based just off of the current events that are going on in the world right now, based off of our, our like three founding principles, which is, is faith number one, freedom number two, and then the outdoors as number three. And it's going to kind of go in that, in that order. I'll get right down to business. Uh, starting off with faith, uh, we have decided it is the month of June, lots of companies. It is pride month, uh, around the world. All you see left and right is individuals, uh, or businesses, uh, that are, um, choosing to donate to LGBTQ, uh, plus organizations. I got a, a jacket in the mail the other day. It came in a huge rainbow bag. Um, and we, we kind of sat down and thought what is, um, an alternative. I hadn't seen anybody uh, like announce an alternative of, of somebody that they were donating to for the month of June. So I talked to uh, Granger and Tyler and Granger's good buddy, Grant Castleberry started a ministry called Unashamed Truth uh, Ministries. Do you want to talk about that at all about Unashamed Truth or Grant or uh, what they do? Um, but long story short, we decided to uh, donate a portion of every sale for the month of June to Unashamed Truth Ministries. And uh, just to provide people a, a, an alternative, uh, let them know that there's there's brands out there that um, aren't necessarily going and doing w- what everybody else is going to do. It's also Mental Health Awareness Month for men, right? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, that's a that's a big deal. They got a day for everything now, a month for everything now. Yeah, I did see that though. Granger, do you have any thoughts on Unashamed Truth? Uh, since you know Grant, so Grant uh, Castleberry is it's he it's an interesting story with us three brothers because he went to the same high school as I did, and uh, our our story is interesting as three brothers because we all three went to different high schools. I ended as, up going to the best one. <laughs> his mom, mom and dad um, ended up moving three times. And it just happened to be when each of us were, um, well, a little earlier for Parker, but as we were going to school. So Grant went to the same high school as I did, and he was a few years younger than Tyler, right? T- two or three years younger than you. So he never overlapped with you, but he knew he knew you, and, you know, as you were um, an older, older kind of hero to him in middle school. So then I went to college and went to company E2 at Texas A&M. Then I left to go to Nashville. When I came back, Grant was younger than me and he was now at A&M in E2. And so I can, when I reconnected with the E2 guys on my second round at Texas A&M, uh, I reconnected with Grant. Then he became a yell leader. And, and then a few years later, Parker goes to A&M, joins E2, becomes the mascot corporal. So there was uh, uh, just a lot of connections in our family. And then Grant went to Southern Seminary. So I have now, I now share my high school, my college, the company and in, in the core cadets and a seminary all with Grant. So a lot of connections and he's a, he's a stand up dude. And he um, believes like we do that um, God has revealed himself in the word of God in the whole canon of scripture. And it should be, taught that way so that people could have a life of abundance as Jesus promised. So what, what does unashamed truth ministries do? They're mainly right now a radio show, but in order to, to have the radio show, I think they're in, they're in a bunch of major cities and Grant interviews people. Grant talks on there. Um, he speaks the gospel, but it costs money to air the show. So, um, they pay, they raise money so that they could continue to air the show and it starts as a radio show and and a podcast and hopefully we'll Online continue to only? grow no no it's on fm radio yeah uh anybody else have any thoughts on the month of june in general or should we move on hey the lakes are full in texas and we're about to hit them with some fish 
That's what I got to say about the month of June. All right. We'll move on there. Moving on to freedom. This is the week of the anniversary of D-Day. I listened to Al Mohler's podcast, which is called, what's it called, Granger? The Briefing. The Briefing, which is a, a daily analysis of news from a Christian worldview, and it's awesome. So I took a lot of uh, his notes on that. And I was pretty amazed by some of the stats on D-Day. I know that a lot of people post about it every year. And, but I feel like people haven't really, I hadn't seen any like deep dives into it. And so I'm just going to spit off a few facts here of the implications of D-Day and just how crazy it was. And yeah, D-Day, D-Day was the, uh, allied invasion of france a lot of people don't like that word invasion but you know what? wh- whatever you want to call it is the allied invasion uh of france both russia and britain were really disappointed with how long it took the united states to come up with with uh this operation or this mission but the united states military commanders knew how important it was to get it right because if if D-Day was was a failure, if they were stopped, then those implications could have kept the war going on for a long time. And it would have been a lot more casualties. And so they took their time to get it to get it right, to make sure that it would work. They had to develop a whole new category of landing craft to get this done. It was all coordinated in the middle of the night landing in the very early morning more than 6,000 ships more than 11,000 planes bombers fighters etc all in the mid 1940s when they didn't have the technology that we have today to co- the logistical coordination to get 6,000 ships in the middle of the night in darkness with that amount on the line just like gives you chills 9,000 men died just within the first few hours. Uh, It was the largest and most successful military invasion in the history of the world. There was nothing like it before, and there's been nothing like it since. And the implications of D-Day being quite literally a a battle of good versus evil, of, of two empires, the Empire of Japan and Nazi Germany, both committing genocide and mass murder, and, and desiring world domination against the allied forces, literally just looking to stop them. I got a quote here from, uh, from General Eisenhower on the 20th anniversary. So this is 1906, in the mid 1960s, uh, the 20, an- 20 year anniversary of, of D Day. And General Eisenhower says he's, they returned uh, to Normandy for, the, for this interview. And General Eisenhower says, these men came here, Americans, to storm these beaches for one purpose only, not to gain anything for ourselves, not to, t- not to fulfill any ambitions that America had for conquest, but just to preserve freedom. Many thousands of men died for ideals such as these. So... The United States didn't invade France to create an empire in our own name, but to to literally stop Adolf Hitler. And there was uh, at the, at the anniversary this year, the 80th 80 year anniversary of D Day. There's not many guys left, and I saw one of the guys. There's like 200, I think. One of the guys. He was one of the only ones that could walk unassisted. And the reason that he could walk unassisted was because he was 15 years old during, during the invasion because he lied on his, on, about his age on the report. He's a 15-year-old boy in Operation Overlord in like one of the greatest, the largest invasions in the, in the history of mankind. Isn't that crazy? It's so crazy. So Tyler, uh, Tyler and I just read a book called Empire of the Summer Moon. And did you know uh, we used Comanches for that D-Day? Yeah, for, for communication. communication. Because they the Comanches had a language that nobody in the world knew. 
And so we used them on two ends of a radio to be able to talk and to keep it secret. We used the Comanche Indian language? No, actual radios? Comanches talking in their language over the radio because no German knew it. And it was impossible to, to ever translate it. So on D-Day and many other missions, we were using uh, actual Comanches from the tribe that were serving the United States, which is... Um, was that in the book? No. Granger, I know you're a history major. Do you have any other thoughts on the implications uh, of D-Day? And yeah. Um, did thoughts? you know that uh, Earl Rudder, Rudder Tower at Texas A&M, who's General Rudder is kind of famous at Texas A&M, Rudder's Rangers, but the Rangers uh, scaled the cliffs in Normandy did you know that Rudder Tower is 107 feet at a on the A&M campus because the cliff was 107 feet that the Rangers scaled on D-Day? Yeah. I've no did you know that? I didn't know that until yeah, like this they year. They made us memorize that in the core at A&M. Uh, that's so crazy. 107 feet. Yeah. you can. A lot of people hate on the traditions at Texas A&M, but there's a few like that that are, are really cool because A&M is, is, had such an integral part. They had more military officers in World War II than any of the service academies combined. Uh, and so A&M has, has a very rich World War II tradition, a lot of rich World War II traditions. And yeah, so that's one of them. I was reading about, I was reading about uh, the beaches uh, at Normandy and just like how daunting the cliffs were and how well defended they were but how the American uh, leadership really tricked uh, the German high command into thinking that they were going to invade uh, in one of the other, one of the other areas in France. And uh, because, because Normandy was so well defended and because those cliffs were so daunting, the Nazi Nazi high command didn't think that they were going to do it. But basically if it, if it worked and if they got a certain amount of ground, then it was going to make the rest of invasion France, the invasion of France uh, a lot easier. So, man, yeah, it's just, I mean, we could have a whole podcast about this. It's just, it, it's so misunderstood and it's so crazy how big that operation was and what that means for us now that really, literally the fact that we're not speaking German is a, a huge part of that operation. And like you said, it's so interesting to think that these men, we lost 400,000 men in World War II, the Americans did. And we didn't gain any ground. We didn't gain any territory. We didn't gain any culture. And in the history of war before that, it was always about, war was about gaining ground, gaining territory, gaining riches, gaining kingdoms, gaining sovereignty. And Americans went to a, a far off land that they had never been to to a culture they had never seen, lis listening to a language they had never heard, and they fought and died on those beaches for the cause of an idea. And I'm reading that book right now, April 1865. Did you ever read that, Parker? Yeah, that's the one that uh, Mark Dever told me was the it's best, the best last, history book. The His last month book. of the Civil War. America, the United States of America, was and still is an idea more than it is a nation because it's it's one of a kind and it it's it has always been a one of a kind scenario situation proposition idea and the, when those men young men teenagers hit the hit those beaches they were fighting for an idea that they believed was a good one and when we Today, in 2024, when we spit in the face of that idea, we're not just saying it's a bad idea. We're saying all those men were wrong and they died for no reason. And it's very interesting to think of it that way. And of course, men and women uh, throughout history fighting for this country have died, not just for an idea, but they were also dying for the, for the men standing right next to them, shoulder to shoulder in those boats. But... But America, this whole freedom thing was very unique to this country. You know, it didn't exist. That, the idea didn't exist in that way where the people have the say. It's not, it's not a king or an emperor or a dictator or a, even a council. It is the people that decide. And, you know, that book, April 1865, 
it was about it was always about the states it was never about the union or the nation and so they the our early founding fathers really struggled with the idea of what do we call this do we call it a nation because it's it's a group of states and so that's why it was the united states was like finally what they decided to call it but it was a very unique thing you know and today that idea is lost it's where it's like no we should be we should be one we should be one sovereign nation and it wasn't intended to be that so that's what we see really now playing out of the news and it's like eye-opening in in light of d-day in light of that book it's eye-opening to think that we have people telling us that we should all be under one government when our founding fathers said no it's the states it's the people it's 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 the house the family and the household decides above the community and the community decides above the city and the city de decides above the state and the state decides above the collection of states which the collection of states decides above the white house that's how it was always supposed to be so what happened Why? people have lost the idea the idea that those men died on the beaches of normandy for was the idea of freedom belongs to the people that's what it always was that's why they fled england and all the other places that that collected in the hodgepodge that became the united states they lost the idea and they're we want as humans to go back to the idea that we need to be led lead us government tell so, us what so to do. you saying where are we right now and is there a revolution coming we the people i think the silent majority still believes like i do and like Yi Yi does the silent majority believes in the idea uh, that those men and women men excuse me died on the beaches of normandy for that freedom belongs to the people there's a lot that can come from from knowing your history of the united states and from from like meditating on it and actually thinking on it because i think that a lot of people know the the general ideas of the different wars in american history and like maybe some of the implications of them but if you really think about what america is and i'm truly not trying to like pander uh to pander of just like general patriotism here but like if you truly if you truly think about what the united states stands for what our roots were where we came from which is something that like personally i hadn't i hadn't thought about like our origins kind of like you talked about and when you do think about that you think of the implications of you it uh, of it it really does make you truly proud to be an american yeah and where we come from. I remember Mark Dever told me that one of the first times he went to Europe, he's a huge history buff. Whenever I was in, uh, on Capitol Hill, uh, last year, I noticed everybody there is, is just knows so much about, uh, our nation's history. And anyway, Mark, I remember he said the first time he was, he was in uh, England, he was in, he's in the UK. He said, he looked around and he just thought, these are the ancestors of the ones who stayed. Yeah these are the ones who stayed and I was like what is he talking about and I was like oh wow he's right yeah the United States is made up of our great great grandfathers are the ones who ended up leaving. they left for they, a they better leaving. for a better idea when Texas won its independence in 1836 and and a less than a decade went by they wanted to join the United States why not to give up Texas not to change their name not to just morph into another nation. No, they said, we want to be Texas with our borders, with our government, with our people. And then we want to join in unification of other states that want the same thing as we do. We don't want to be Missouri. Missouri doesn't want to be Texas. But each of us, we want to have our, our own states that are, that are protected together by each other because we're United States, even in the name itself, the United States. Think about that. Like you said, meditate on that idea for a second. It's, the, it's not singular, it's plural. It's we, the people together, our city, our, our little town here in your family, Parker, is more important 
than your little town. And your little town is more important than the greater central Texas area. And Texas is more important than, than the United States. And that's, it's, not, it's not a we're better than anybody. It's, that's how the system is. It's upside down system. It's how it was set up. But when it's right side up and you're looking down on, onto the people from high above, it gets corrupted. And we have to fight for that idea. So what, what is a listener supposed to do that's like, yeah, I agree with everything Granger's saying, but he's just in his little town, you know, doesn't have a following, doesn't have a voice. What are, what are those Americans supposed to do well, the, to it w- preserve the freedom and everything they fought for? The voice always was supposed to matter. Every individual voice is what made up the, the big voice, right? So you're saying so to, vote. To, to vote social media if they have one? That's what you're saying. I don't. I haven't thought any any more past what I've just get what I've the information just what I've the just given Joe you guys. Is like, yeah, I agree with what you're saying, Granger. But what is he supposed to do? I don't know if we're like calling people to a call to action here, but just like an appreciation for what America well, is. Everybody, and everybody listening to this probably has that appreciation and agree with what we're saying. But is there anything that they and we Dude, should do? You know what's crazy also about that April 1865, which you should read it too. It's called April 1865 the most important month in our, in our nation's history. And another thing that was that our founding fathers really struggled with was when they bring a state in like Texas, when they, they come into the union, are we holding them here or are they free to come and go whenever they want, which is called perpetuity? Can they leave or are they, when they're signed in and we, they become part of the 50, are they here forever? Or can they just say, hey, we want out? And that's what Abraham Lincoln was was so dead set to do is we got to preserve the the union of these states, not union meaning nation, but union meaning the collection. We've got to save the let's stick together, guys. Come on, don't leave. And so I think in in honor of Abraham Lincoln, who I think had the right idea, we the answer to you is not well. We're going Texas. Going to leave. Texas is going to secede from the union. And which we'll, a lot of people say. Which a lot of people say. And that's what happened in 1860 for a lot of reasons, slavery being the biggest. But a lot of people said, Let, we're just going to leave. South Carolina said, we're out of here. And Lincoln, Lincoln said, hang on. We need each other. New York needs Texas. Texas needs California. California needs South Carolina. South Carolina needs Maine. We need each other for all m- different reasons. But um, so I think the answer is not secede, but back to the forefathers idea, but are we here because we're made to, we have to stay, you can't leave, or are we here because we want to be here, <laughs> right? So the, there's all kinds of crazy things that come into play here. Uh, and I don't, I don't know the answer, but I, I think people should read history books. People should know where this country came from. The idea that was so unique to to world history that is the United States of America. It's a good place to uh, to transition, I think. Lastly, going into uh, the third pillar of Yee Yee, the outdoors. You guys are going fishing tomorrow. Do you want to share exactly what you're doing, how you got into this form of fishing, <laughs> etc.? <cetera? laughs> oh, Tyler, I've talked too much. On this how we got time. into this form? You mean bass fishing? <laughs> <laughs> I guess just like t- taking it seriously because we grew up just fishing on banks, but you guys now are like traveling hours uh, before the sunrise. I don't know, man. I mean, I'm just, I'm just self-taught. Like I went to Bass Pro the other day, like, well, it was probably like a year ago now. And he was telling me all kinds of things about what rod to get. And and this, this one is for bass. This one's for catfish. You know, you need this, you know, poundage for test line. And don't you, the biggest thing was like, don't use this lure for this, this rod. And I was just like, dude, I've been doing it wrong my whole life. But I, I've just self-taught and we just grew up going to, to ponds in Texas and, and bass fishing and just tying a knot, figuring out from dad, a fisherman's knot, oh, that one's probably a little better and do a lot of plastic worms and Texas rig, which everything that all the language is like 
my version. My version of rigging up a Texas rig is probably different than yours, and we're probably both wrong, but it's just enjoying being on the lake with friends and family. And, uh, and it's fun to see it through Lincoln's eyes now. Yeah. How he's, he's like, Daddy, can we leave when it's still dark outside? That's what he said yesterday. So what are y'all, what are y'all doing tomorrow? Bass fishing at a lake in Texas. Yeah, we're going early. We're going to try to get out there and fish as hard as we can from 6 a.m. to about 11 when it gets too hot, and then we'll have to go in. And you got a boat. Are you going to catch and release? Yeah, yeah. When is this podcast releasing? Uh, This week. Tonight? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say comment below. One thing that I, I realized that I needed, was I, I thought my glasses were polarized, and that was just a huge mistake, and they did nothing. So I got polarized glasses yeah um tomorrow um anything else that you forgot from the first time we went same i had some glasses that stayed polarized but then i left i've got some good smith ones at home yeah so I've those been, are a game changer yeah i've been wearing those a lot i was wearing Look, those at the creek with remember lincoln that little cove we're in and they were everywhere but we couldn't see them yeah the yeah, glasses, glasses you'll just be able huge. to see everything so lincoln and i were fishing or not fishing but we we're swimming in the mom's creek you know and like i Lincoln was I was like this is full of bass and Lincoln was like where and I said look look take my glasses and yeah it's game changer mm -hmm. so we're taking two boats my, my cousin's going his wife's going Lincoln's going I'm going Tyler's going we we'll take two boats we'll put in about my goal is to get in the water about six and um we'll just fish as hard as we can around like there's some old docks and stuff that's an old it's an old lake I say old it's probably 70 years old and and um, have you read that book, uh, Cedar Choppers? Yet? Not yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a good one too. We're talking about a lot of books on this podcast, but that talks about the the f those lakes when they were made. But we'll fish around those old docks and hopefully get some big bass. You sure you don't want to go? Why would you not, Parker? It's like Bass Pro. I just don't really want to wake up at like four a.m. to travel, and I don't know. That's our CEO of Yee Yee Apparel, folks. I don't want to wake up early hey, to go fishing. In his defense, somebody he's got to be here working. That's true. Keeping us in business while That's we true. go fish. That's true. It's it has been, it has been a little contagious to see you guys get excited and to think about, you know, polarized glasses and your rods and you know what kind of you boat gotta, and you got to do something when it's not deer season, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, Chad hooked onto a, about a ten pounder. It was huge. And didn't get it in the boat. And I want to go back to that stick and see. Cause probably I know, still there, right? I, know, I don't know. I think I it's probably still there. I, they leave, hang, They don't leave. Yeah, that's probably the first spot we'll go. <laughs> Brian, are you going? Brian's going with Thumbs us. up. <laughs> when are we going to get a microphone on Brian? Like, uh, he, he's just like the silent partner here. Cool. I guess we'll we'll end it there. Godspeed tomorrow with the fishies. And uh, thank you guys for listening. Yep. It's good to be back. Go vote. It's good to be back. Tyler says go vote. And think uh, you know who we're voting for, brother. <laughs> 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 we'll see you next time on the UU podcast. Yeah.